Thanks for joining us here today and thanks for waiting. We have a new computer that we're getting all configured for our live streaming. So thanks for waiting a couple minutes. So happy to be here today. We have, it's just been a really busy, exciting week in the studio. So I just want to share, first of all, I made a, I made a major purchase this week and I have been hunting on Craigslist for actually a few years now and I finally came uh, across this drafting table. Can we, can we show the picture of the table? It's epic. It is really, 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 really epic. It is a Mayline drafting table uh, used by engineers, draftsmen, artists for a long time. And so it's a vintage table and I got it sweet gentleman in a, a, a local uh, suburb here in Portland sold it to me and he is a retired structural engineer and he was so sweet <laughs> we managed to get Kevin and I managed to get it in the van and get it back to the studio and it's so amazing I can put I can spread out watercolors and, and sketchbooks and pastels and my dinner and everything on that table it's just amazing it's just I just absolutely love it at first when I when I first brought it back to the studio I thought oh what have I done that's so big but we did kind of find a good spot for it and yep. now it's, it's it's really it's and amazing we, we put wheels on it right away yeah we did yep, <laughs> we put, yep. everything's on wheels in the studio so so that's my big my big exciting um, purchase. I'm so glad. I mean, I was looking for it for such a long time. Kind of looked all over the country and finally found it locally. So that's that. And also it's a little bit harvest time in the studio. Really happy that we've got, got some of my tomatoes coming in. They're so amazing because the colors are just, they're just incredible. I just think they're, and they smell so good. So um, garden harvest time, it's getting there. All right, but the most exciting thing is that we are releasing a new workshop today, and I'm so happy to um, be offering it because um, it's Next Level Animals. And some of you have probably been uh, following and seeing some of the animals that I've been doing, but really my journey into painting animals started when I was a young girl. It's really what got me interested in doing art in the first place. So it just felt so right to like kind of go back to those roots and also be at the same time going to the next level with my pastels and bringing that to you guys. Um, in this workshop, we do some really big stuff and we use some different papers and some abstract underpaintings. So it's really a dynamic workshop. Really, it is taking, taking things to the next level. And we're having a sale right now, of course, on the new workshop. And it's $84 right now. It's that, so that's $35 off the regular price. And that's, um, it's going to be on sale, sale until September 8th. And of course, monthly pastel painting lessons members get their extra $20 off. And we are having another sale with some coupons right now, but the coupons are not applicable to the, the, our new workshop. So sorry about that. Um, so those are not compatible. But we still go to the website and check out the monthly lessons. They're on sale until September 1st as well. The, um, so this is a really fabulous time right now to get in on the lessons and the other workshops as well. So because there's, there are coupons there for that. So that's so exciting. I'm really happy that um, the other thing about Next Level Animals, you might have seen that I there's an award-winning painting um, that uh, is all in, featured in the workshop. So that's really um, a cool thing. And I won a prize at the uh, IAPS Pastel World Show this year for the rooster. So that's super cool. 
And um, what else? So today, oh yeah, we could flip through some of the images. So the, uh, there, in the workshop, there's a lot, a lot of different kinds of animals, a couple horses, there's a gray horse, there's a cow. Of course, we have to have a cow with the rim lighting. It's really big and fantastic. And the Labrador Retriever, he's beautiful and sweet and nuzzling horses, so you get to really get in there and play with color. Of course, the rooster, lots of movement and dynamic mark making. The spaniel, he's just so sweet and colorful. And yeah, so there's lots to dig into in that workshop. It's, in a certain way, it's kind of uh, simple uh, because it's the, the subject is focused um, in, in, in a way kind of simple but it, it does give you the opportunity to really, really get in there and play, play with scale uh, and scale of the mark making, which I think just brings a whole other, whole other thing to our work. And so without further ado, I thought I would start today with um, another, another rooster. And I have uh, done some preparation for you guys. So we could switch to the to the palette cam here as I get into doing some demo. But I want to, um, before I start this today, I want to just talk about where it is right now and how I got here. And uh, monthly members, we, f we actually filmed um, uh, yesterday me starting this underpainting. And what I did... On, in this particular case, this is uh, Arches watercolor paper. It happens to be only the 140 pound. And you know, you, you might, if you're using a lot of water media on the, the paper, you, it, it might be wise to go up to the 300 pound if you are sort of bothered by the paper buckling a little. I personally am not really. So I don't mind using the 140 pound. Love this paper, it's bright white. I love the deckled edge. So, so classic and beautiful. I have put a pastel ground on this particular piece. So it's got some tooth to it and that ground is transparent. So there's just one layer of that pastel ground. And the watercolor paper and um, Arches or Fabriano, it does take the pastel just fine without having taken that additional step of adding the ground. But I, yesterday I just decided I was going to go ahead and do that. That ground also just gives a little bit more texture overall. So then after I applied that ground and let it dry completely, I added some fluid acrylics with a brush and I used a couple colors. I used this very interesting color, quinacridone nickel azo gold. That's what this is. And it's such a beautiful, rich color. And I just applied that very loosely with a house painting brush. So I was picking up some of this texture. And I thought that texture and just the, the, the brush strokes would begin to suggest this guy's great attitude and movement and, you know, preparing to go. And then I added some glue uh, down here and let it drip. Then, so that's where I left it yesterday. And then I, as I came in here today, thinking about what I'm going to do for you guys, I decided that I was going to add a little bit more paint. And I added some India ink right here with a brayer. And my intent here is to be able to have this dark here to carve this guy out of. So I'm intentionally having wanting this dark background and this light, I'm planning this light edge. Now I went ahead and put his 
uh, that red in. Now, one might say that there isn't much else to do here. <laughs> this in itself, to me, it's, it, it's, it's already, if you looked at this and that said, okay, that's an, that's an abstract drawing of a rooster. Uh, there's a certain part of me that says, well, you know what, that's almost enough. What else would I want to do? There's this little ghosted uh, beak right here, a little idea, the eye, a little bit of contour, some suggestion of the feathers, even of the, of the, of the feet down here. So what else would I want to do? So I think often, you know, when we're painting in a more abstract manner, you know, we're putting something down and we're responding to it, putting something else down and responding to it, and really being driven by the artwork as much, if not more, than the reference that we might be using or drawing upon. Uh, so I have to see where, where, what I want to do here today. I, I'm maybe not that much. Um, and so I think that that's like a little conversation to have with yourself as you're painting um, that, and of course music and just having a nice flow going can facilitate that, that sort of conversation with the, with the painting. But let's see what happens. But before I get going, maybe I'll take some questions and I'll take questions during today if people have any questions about the workshop and whatnot. Yeah. So, so um, does the buckling of the paper create challenges for framing? Um, yeah, it can. Um, it, you know, the buckling of the paper, um, you know, of course, it's all relative. Like, this is looking pretty good, and um, I think that this is fine. Um, I happen, for this particular style of painting, I would be looking at floating the piece of paper for the framing. I love that look. So that, the buckling is not as much of an issue if you're going to do that kind of framing treatment. So I think it's a kind of multifaceted question, actually. Cool. And right. um, is the is the um, workshop a standalone workshop? Yes, it's a standalone workshop. Yes, it's not part of monthly. It's on, it's it's on its own. And you don't and but you could do it with you know that could be the first one you get. You don't need to. There's no um, prerequisite or anything like that. Oh no no uh -uh. no uh -uh. there the I call it next level animals because I I feel like it's just you know just stepping up in terms of doing a little bit bigger bigger bolder mark mark making just kind of take taking it to the to a, a, another place there obviously when we're doing animals there is some drawing uh, involved and of course I have a drawing course too so that would those would be two really good courses to to put together the drawing and the next level animals okay and uh, really quick just yeah. to let everybody know we're um, we're ironing out some uh, the new computer so we're figuring out the audio levels and stuff like yes that. yeah so yeah we're yeah we're on the fly on the fly we um the the old computer was just really kind of hit hit a wall on us and we're kind of lucky that we were able to get it together at all <laughs> all right I'm going to start out with um, some neutrals here. And again, I'm going to think about carving out this, this guy a little bit. And, you know, it's tough because I, I don't, I'm, I'm almost feeling like I'm, I'm almost there with it right now.
What color was the dark paint? The the gold. Uh, I think the darker one. The, the 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 dark down here is ultramarine blue. This is India ink, uh, and this one is a it's a odd uh, color quinacridone nickel azo gold. I really like I really like this rich color. It's just gorgeous. Um, Okay. Just to clarify, um, someone wants to know if you recorded the beginning of this painting. I, I did record some of it. And monthly people, because monthly people get all the good stuff, they get all the extras, they're going to get that recording link to the beginning. This is our special. We'll be sending out that link uh, soon. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly when. We finished the video and it's uh, it's ready to roll. Yeah. We did it yesterday on the new table. We did. Yep. Yeah. The new table is like it's going to get some action. I'm going to get some action this weekend, too. You find a lot of good stuff on Craigslist. you got to keep oh my your eyes God. open. I can't believe the price that I got, got it for, too. And the guy was so sweet. He was kind of... Um, he was kind of tearing up a little bit at the end because he was, re you know, he retired. And he, had, he, he said that he'd had that table up in his um, office for 28 years and um, I, you know so I was just like, oh wow I, I know what that's I know all about that kind of thing and the art making uh, equipment and having an attachment to it and it's so um, great I actually called him after I got it home and found the you know right spot, and I you know to let him know that how much I love it, and um, that was neat. So yeah, like like see right now, he this is sort of coming together. Like you you know I, I it, it's really tough. Like you know how much do I want to do? Um, Yeah, Kevin and I were having a discussion about this today. Like what what Okay, so this is that back leg and I'm carving that out of right And letting it be kind of ghosted. Is that too long? Maybe. I kind of it's fun. Yeah, that's not bad right there. So could you have done the same underpainting um, with this with the same paint on a on pastel mat? A pastel mat? 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely could use pastel matte for something like this, but the thing with pastel matte, you're, you know, you're not going to get, you know, I was definitely after hot to get some of this fun um, texture. And pastel mats, um, you have to work at get, getting that. Um, you could you could get it, but um, so a lot of times I'm going to pick media that's going to further whatever idea I have, uh, best further in in in, in my uh, with whatever experience I have or knowledge that I might have about it. Hopefully, um, you know sometimes. It doesn't work out, but um, okay. So far, I really, really like it. <laughs> it's cool. Um, Now, maybe I want something about those tail feathers. Now, it occurs to me to go ahead and pull in a different color for those tail feathers. So, um, if you were going to float this in the frame, yeah, um, would you tear it closer to the composition? Yeah, I probably would. I, I, I would try to get another decal. You know, using a straight edge, you can, you can tear it. You have to do it carefully, but you can uh, grab the decal. Another, another, another one. Can you use um, pan pastels on 140-pound paper? Oh, yeah, pan pastels, to totally, yeah. Pan, pan pastels are, um, they'll, they'll go on there, yeah. Okay, I love that right there. I'm not going to touch that. That's... To me, my, that's my favorite part. I, I like how the, the um, feet turned out. Um, I think that, that that's working. A little more, um, yeah. And maybe up here in the, uh, on the head, maybe some idea of the eye. Pretty much like this, too. So, boy, it's kind of it's a tough one to decide on, on. Let's see, I need something a little lighter, even. Maybe here. And did you have a reason to make this so red? Uh, no, I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I just thought it would look good. Um,
uh, the and I and I was wanting to have the um, the bird be overall neutral, which it is, and let the background have the intensity and uh, you know all the all the color going on in the background. That was my my main thought there. Are you using some pure white in there? Yeah, I am using some pure white. Get in there and what I think is the eye. And uh, what brand acrylic did you use? It's the, this is, um, this is golden, but um, golden or Liquitex, they're, they're really similar. More importantly, it's high flow acrylic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you definitely want to use the, um, because it's thin and it's not going to fill the tooth of the paper. Now, like right now, that that little that beak, I, I really don't want to do any more on that. That that is it. That is, you know, one of those kind of uh, marks that's just kind of kismet. That oh wow, that just worked out. Um, that you really wouldn't want to change. Yeah, um, thinking one. Um. Yeah, but next level animals is so. I, I'm just really between the 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 portraits that I've been doing and the animals that I've been doing, and just working on working on the workshops. Boy, it's just like a whole new whole new world. Super super fun. Okay, I think that's. See, I don't know. I think that that's. I don't think I should do too much more. What do you think, Kevin? Ah, uh, yeah, don't overdo it. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, there's one thing yeah. that somebody pointed out that does yeah. look like there's a little man. Um, Where? Bottom left. His little... two feet, and he's kind of facing the rooster. Little man. See that? He's like, uh, he's kind of in a bit of a perspective. Can we point him out? Because I, I, don't, I don't want a little man, probably. Yeah, you get rid of oh, I see it. Yeah, you don't want to do? be like. <laughs> I don't. I don't see food it. Of the gods. See, there's his foot. There's his other foot, and he's facing this way. Oh, I don't really see that as a man. Keep hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, I think maybe we. What I do see, I look to me. This looks like sunglasses right there. <laughs> that. Kevin and I were having that discussion today too about um, at, in abstracts. You don't you don't necessarily want that. Like um, Kevin was mentioning that Jackson Pollock, if someone said that they saw a face or a, 
a, a figure in one of his pieces, he would he would cover that over and get rid of it because that wasn't the point. Um, so yeah, probably not the point. Is that better? Get rid of yeah. the man. It does look like he's just hanging out. He's just hanging out, he's looking hanging out, at uh, leaning against the wall, a little basket. All right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> That's a riot. So this piece would would present uh, difficulty with with framing, right? Like you'd have to kind of um, problem solve. When, I mean, what's that mean? Difficulty. Um, because of the buckled paper, and now you're going to have to cut it down. Or would you would you use um, um, a mat or? Um, there's all yeah, there are all kinds of things that you could do. Um, yeah, I it, I wouldn't say it's a problem um, as much as it is an opportunity because <laughs> it would look you know it would just look really really cool. It would it would it would be a cool piece. I'm gonna see about adding a little hint of color in here. Yeah, and I just I hesitate because I I just don't I don't want to overdo it. I've got a little bit of suggestion of some aqua in there. Definitely don't need. I like it. I'm looking at him. Yeah, I I don't know. I think I'm I, I think I need to leave it alone, you guys. So, um, maybe maybe this gets quieted too. That's probably helpful. Yeah, yeah, let's put the there. I'll square up the camera a little bit too. Yeah, I mean you could you could you could frame it with some of that edge showing or you could come in on it. Um either way I think it's pretty neat. Yeah, fun. Right. Well, I'll take some more questions. And um, anybody has any questions about the art, about the Maylight table? <laughs> what let's, um, what? let's frame that again real quick, just because your, your back what? was kind of to the, oh, really? to the camera a little okay. bit. There he is. Fun. Lots of energy. I, I really just like the simplicity of the marks. And just, just getting really focused on his gesture and that movement. Cool. So right. um, for a couple questions, yeah. do you have any preferences when it comes to grounds? Well, there's a couple different. Um, there, well, there's several different pastel grounds out there. Um, I used, I think mine was golden. Um, Art Spectrum has them. Art Spectrum actually has some that have color in them, so that's a fun thing to play with as well. Um, there's one that's terracotta that I, that I think is really really beautiful. Um, Art Spectrum. So there's plenty of things to play with in in that realm. Well, when it comes to using, during the workshop, we use uh, Fabriano paper and 
uh, Arches watercolor paper. So Fabriano is considered a, an, a watercolor paper, but also printmaking paper, so is Arches. Um, both beautiful papers, They're, they have come in beautiful, nice big sheets. And we really employ those big sheets um, during this workshop. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, it's, you can use those, as I said at the beginning of the broadcast, without using a ground because they will take the pastel really well. But putting down a ground is going to just give you a little bit more to grab the pastel on. So, yeah, it's really beautiful paper. Cool. And, Love it. Um, where, uh, just another question, Yeah. Um, where and what color would you use to sign this piece? Hmm. Good question. So sign placing a signature is something to, you know, definitely is good to give some careful thought to. My first, um, my first inclination here is that that signature ought to be over here because he's facing that way and all the sort of energy of the piece is going here and a signature here could be a little bit of a you know like a like a fine point on the on the whole thing uh, but I don't feel like that's a really good spot for it in terms of the the value there's it's kind of busy over here, it's a little less busy, and I could see a signature going right there, but it doesn't really kind of fit with the action, does it? So I might do a couple things here. I might go ahead and put some something here that gives me a little place for the signature. Um, so, and I might, you know, put it like right, right, right there. I like to put, make my signatures with a dark red, um, because it's, um, usually that dark red can be the, a similar value to what's going on, but, but possibly, you know, got, it's going to hopefully going to have some more intensity. So that usually works out really well. So if I were doing it, then I'm going to have a hard time getting that on there. Yeah, see, it's not. There we go. It'd go right in there. Something like that. I'd have to redo that, I think, to get it to go on a little better. But something like that. We need to redo it. Maybe I should use, I can use blue spruce. That'll kind of do the same thing in that it's also um, dark and it's going to be um, got a little more intensity. Let's see if I can find one that will work really well. Getting low on them here. Let's see. Nope. What's this? This one? Yeah, this one, yeah. So. Something like that. Cool. So right. um, you said the, the sale okay. for Next Level Animals goes on until September 8th, you said? Yep, it's September 8th, and it's a really good price. It's So it's right now it's only $84, and that's $35 off. And the monthly people, you get your $20 off. And so that's a, an additional discount this year of five five more dollars off any workshop. So it's a really um, it's a really good price. And of course, then the, the drawing workshop is a really good um, companion to next level animals as well. So, yeah. So, cool. So, good stuff. Maybe we can close with one last question. Sure. A very cool question. Yes. Uh, can one use oil pastels 
and soft as towels together, are they compatible uh, or are they very different? They're very, very different. They're really not compatible. Um, I, I imagine there are people that are able to kind of work it out, but they're really, they're like, they're, they're two different things. One's um, the, the soft pastels, so considered soft pastels, are pure pigment with the binder and sometimes a little bit of talc depending on the quality. Um, usually just pure pigment and a binder and oil pastels have that medium they have they have oil in them so really don't they don't play nice they do not play nice so yeah and I do not have oil pastels I mean I have some but that's that's not my usual my usual um, thing so yeah yeah yep yep okay yeah that's fine yep 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 Okay, um, yep, yeah, and remember, we're, we're still having a sale on our monthly pastel painting lessons online. That is going to be going through September 1st, and it's the best time to get in. We have a theme this year of around the world, so each um, month focuses on a region from around the world, so it's super fun, and we're doing a lot of different things in uh, year four of monthly pastel painting lessons online. So yeah, there's just a, a totally vast library of content there now. So, and you don't have to do it in any particular order. You can bounce around and just enjoy. It's like a streaming service. Um, you can, as long as you're a member, you have access to all of the lessons, which there are tons of them now, so. Okay, I hope you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This was super fun for me to paint. I really had a good time doing it for you guys. Um, I know it's, it's, a, it's quite a lot different. It's, it's definitely more intuitive, but that's next level. And um, we'll see you soon. We hope to see you really soon. Thanks for joining, and I hope you get to do some art this weekend. I sure plan on using that big old table. All right, guys, see you soon. Bye.